Ferrari's Spanish Grand Prix was unquestionably a nightmare as a power unit failure cost Charles Leclerc victory and handed the lead of both championships to Red Bull. But this disaster of a result and the impact it has on the Formula 1 title race shouldn't hide the fact that Red Bull still has significant problems of its own. In this video we're going to look at the concerns within each camp and explain why both still look vulnerable, even though this was Ferrari's turn to suffer a headline grabbing retirement. It was all going so well for Leclerc, pole position leading early on and his nearest rival in both the race and the championship Max Verstappen going off and leaving him in a very comfy position. Then it all went so wrong so quickly, when he started to slow on lap 26 and crawled back to the pit lane with an unspecified power unit problem. Leclerc has dropped points at other races this season but not like this. It's his first retirement of the year at a point where the power unit is high mileage, which will be a concern for Ferrari that its heavily revised engine design is not as reliable as it needs to be. Ferrari started the year looking in great shape with its new internal combustion engine appearing at least a match for Honda and looking more reliable to boot. But the season is 22 races long, which means to avoid a penalty each engine, turbo, MGUH etc needs to do at least 7 races. A failure of some kind in race 6 is worrying, even though reliability fixes are permitted within the frozen engine specifications. Ferrari hasn't been able to define the exact problem yet. It was a sudden failure that Ferrari was only aware of when it received Leclerc's first panicked radio message. It was obviously a serious issue, one that will be assessed properly in Maranello before the Monaco Grand Prix. Reliability is a key factor in any title fight and the impact of Ferrari's vulnerability was immediate. With Verstappen winning and Sergio Perez supporting a Red Bull 1-2, this dealt Ferrari a massive blow in both championships. Leclerc hasn't won a race since Australia, where Verstappen retired. After that Grand Prix, Leclerc had a massive lead and was 46 points ahead of the Red Bull driver. Now Leclerc has been jumped by Verstappen, who leads by 6 points, and Ferrari is suddenly staring at a 26 point deficit to Red Bull in the Constructors' Championship after Carlos Sainz's low key performance that began with a poor start and got worse when he spun at Turn 4. At the start of the season, Ferrari built a buffer to Red Bull specifically because its rival was unreliable and underachieving. Ferrari cannot afford for those positions to have switched now that it's the one staring at a points deficit. Look, we know how this sounds, pointing out problems for Red Bull when it's just bagged a 1-2, taken the lead of both championships and Ferrari's lead driver retired from the Grand Prix. But before all of that, the race was going away from Red Bull in quite a dramatic way. Verstappen was second behind Leclerc before he went off through the gravel after getting caught out by a gust of wind at Turn 4. Then a DRS problem sparked obvious anger from its world champion and was compromising his race. Verstappen had already suffered an annoying DRS issue in qualifying that ruined his final run, and while he felt he'd have still lost pole to Leclerc anyway, he was lucky it didn't cost him any more places on the grid. Red Bull changed the DRS actuator overnight, but still had the same problem on Sunday. Verstappen couldn't get the DRS to open immediately, which was costing him time, especially when he was trying to repass George Russell's Mercedes. Verstappen's frustration boiled over several times on the team radio, unsurprising as the problem remained for the entire Grand Prix. The cause seems to be Red Bull being too ambitious with taking weight out of the car, which meant the DRS components were too light and flexed too much, causing it to jam. This is a problem for Red Bull because it follows Verstappen's declaration at the previous race in Miami that its weekends are too hit and miss at the moment. Verstappen's results in 2022 have followed a surprisingly simple pattern. He's either won or retired, and he knows that's not sustainable over a season if he wants to win the championship. After two non-finishes in the first three races, Verstappen became the first driver to record back-to-back -back victories and now he has three in a row. It's the first streak of the season and has injected much needed momentum into Verstappen's title campaign. So on the surface this does look like Red Bull recognising its early season shortcomings and really getting a handle on things. But that isn't quite the case, Red Bull's still suffering from small inconvenient problems here and there. In Miami, Verstappen was genuinely concerned that his weekend would be irreparably compromised by a terrible Friday, when a precautionary gearbox change led to a late start in FB2 and then an incorrectly fitted hydraulic line cut his running short. In the race there, his teammate Perez felt he lost a likely podium because of a sensor issue that cost him engine power mid-race and was not fully resolved later on. Then came the DRS problems in Spain, which could have had a tangible cost in qualifying and needlessly complicated Verstappen's Grand Prix. He gave Red Bull a very hard time for that and is still calling for the team to raise its game because he knows the standards the team has to meet. 
Being more reliable has been Verstappen's mantra since Red Bull shock double DNF right at the end of the season opening Sakhir Grand Prix. There have been some suggestions that some sloppiness has crept in on the power unit side with the new arrangement with Honda, which is effectively now a contracted supplier after its official exit at the end of 2021. Even if that has been the case, Red Bull itself has also contributed to its own problems. There were even suggestions in Spain that Verstappen might have to start the race in the pit lane, because there appeared to be a potential issue with his car's fuel temperature. Ultimately, that came to nothing, but it was still noteworthy that Verstappen was late out of the garage and to the grid, and that Red Bull had a confrontation with the FIA over the matter in the build-up to the race. The longer it takes Red Bull to iron out issues like these, the more often we're going to see Verstappen's emotions come to the surface like they did in Spain. These situations rarely bring out the best in team or driver. All they do is inject tension into situations that are already high pressure, and that can take a toll on even the strongest working relationships. And let's not forget, had Ferrari not handed this one back to Red Bull on a plate, Verstappen would likely have come home a distant and frustrated second, having lost ground in the title race and watched his recent championship momentum shudder to a halt. After his retirement, Leclerc was searching for the bright side. He said he has no choice but to look at the positives and said there were plenty over the weekend. There were definitely good signs for Ferrari. Its pace advantage was aided by upgrades allowing the car to be run lower without porpoising as badly. The F175 has been potent over one lap all season, but the team felt there was untapped potential because it has visibly suffered from the bouncing effect of this year's ground effect cars. Ferrari's first big update of the season at Barcelona included a new floor to better control that phenomenon and allow the car to be run lower and gain performance. The outer vein on the entry to the Venturi Tunnel has been heightened and re-angled, which is an attempt at increasing the air intake without suffering a lack of pressure. Ferrari also had a revised rear wing and new detail around the rear brake ducts at Barcelona. This added up to Ferrari seemingly having the fastest car again, although you could contend that has been the case over one lap on every weekend, and it's simply on race pace that it slipped behind Red Bull at the previous two Grand Prix. Ferrari had also developed a recent trend of using its tyres more aggressively than the Red Bull, something that continued into Friday practice in Spain, where the Red Bull was clearly superior on long run pace. Although Ferrari is hopeful that the upgraded car will generally be kinder on its tyres once it's optimised, Leclerc was specifically encouraged by setup changes after Friday and said it was basically not the same car at all, in a good way. That seemed to continue into the Grand Prix, with Leclerc and the team both happy with how the tyre management was playing out although we needed to see Leclerc's entire race play out to judge it properly. Leclerc said that encouragement gives him confidence for the rest of the season, and there was no sign of massive over-the-top frustration once he got back to the garage, which he said was because he saw his disappointed mechanics needed cheering up. There's often too much person says bad thing isn't bad in Formula 1, but Leclerc genuinely seems to have taken comfort from other elements of the weekend, and says he still feels better after this race than the last two. But he's also aware that for all the positivity in Spain, Ferrari's engine failure ultimately rendered its improvements meaningless. So while Red Bull's good form shouldn't hide the fact that it is still vulnerable at the moment, Ferrari's far from bulletproof itself. And both rivals need to sharpen up, especially as Mercedes showed in Spain it's finally getting closer to the front and will be ready to punish any sloppiness soon. The World Champion team's revival merits its own video entirely though, which you'll find on this channel soon, so make sure you're subscribed to check it out.